So, continuation, this book. Now, after Einstein discovered that light uh, exists of packets, while it was considered to be a wave, it was tried out if things that were considered to be particles could also, the other way around, be behave as, as waves. So they used some electrons, particles, and they shoot them at a screen with two slits in it and both slits start to act as a source of electrons on the other side emit electrons and they put a screen there behind it and lo and behold the screen shows an interference pattern which means that you have wave uh, troughs and wave crests annihilating each other and amplifying each other but the, the strange thing is that on the screen still you only see electrons just you don't see electrons in the places where they should annihilate, but you don't see double strength electrons on the places where they do. You just see more electrons or less electrons. So this is a very weird thing, and what they what they then uh, try to do is let's see if we can uh, send electrons one at a time. So we send an electron, and a day later even send another one, and a day later another one, and what builds up on the screen. In the end, it's still an interference pattern. How can this be? Only they can never interfere with each other. They are a day apart, which is a long time for humans, at least. And um, yeah, um, then they thought, okay, what do we do? We're gonna track through which slit it goes. So they put a little light source there in the detector and see where the electron goes through. Now you can actually track the electron, see through which slit it goes, but what happens when you do that? Then the interference pattern disappears and it starts behaving like a particle again, like you're shooting bullets at a, at a screen with two holes in it. And um, yeah, so the, the I theory behind that is that okay the light shining on it to to look at through which hole it goes the light is so bright that it the photons bump into the electron and disturb uh, the experiment so what do we do we use photons with less energy or a longer wavelength then the wavelength becomes longer and longer and longer and indeed the interference pattern then reappears again on the screen but the problem is when you have a very long wavelength you cannot make it uh, you cannot see very accurately because it is, your accuracy is proportional to the wavelength so you cannot see through which slit it goes anymore so you're stuck there so it seems to be tricking you left and right this uh, whole experience it's kind of weird and um, so yeah what was the uh, the core of the of the debate between Bohr and Einstein that was do particles have defined properties like momentum and positions or is there only a probability that they can be found at position x and at momentum y so um, and qm actually says that a particle has all these positions and momentums at the same time it's just that when you make an observation then the wave function collapses and you only see one outcome and um, yeah that that was the I think the core of the debate and it leads to very strange things so um, uh, quantum mechanics in, in, with its wave function collapse because um, suppose you have a radioactive atom and it will decay and quantum mechanics says okay it will decay with a certain probability so after an hour you know that with a certain probability it has decayed or it has uh, not decayed and QM says both these things happen and only when you make an observation then uh, you can actually see that one happened or one didn't. Now Schrodinger who was a bit on Einstein's side in this debate said okay let's let's that 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 can lead to a very strange situation if you translate it to the macro world because you could have this radioactive atom and put the Geiger counter on it and uh, have it break a capsule with poisonous gas and put a cat next to it. Put everything in one box. Don't worry, it's a thought experiment. Never kill a real cat, I hope. And what happens then is that um, that according to QMC, the uh, radioactive atom has both both decayed and not decayed at the same time because you have not made the observation yet. Both things are are actually happening in a superposition. So both the, the Geiger counter has done click and it has not done click. And 
both the capsule has broken, it has not broken, both the cat has died and it has not died. So as long as you keep the box closed, there's a, a, a mix, a superposition of a dead and a live cat in there. And when you open the box, it's, oh, well, well, yeah, it's, it's still alive. And that is quite weird, and Schrodinger also used that, and, and Einstein had his own version with a, 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 a barrel of gunpowder, and at some point they, they blew up the cat, or they mixed up the metaphors. But uh, can it be that the gunpowder has exploded and not exploded at the same time? It's a little bit weird, of course. Now, uh, a metaphor I came up with uh, is, uh, is especially nice for a high school explanation, maybe, is you could see it as you have a pretty girl and there's a room with two doors in it and the girl walks in one door and she walks out when she walks out the other door she is swinging her panty over her head now the scientist looking at this uh, thing say oh she must have been uh, naked inside that room let's take a look so they drill a hole in the wall they flip on the light and when they look then then the girl does not come out anymore with her panty swinging over her head so they look at each other and think what happened here ah she must have realized we were looking uh, let's lengthen the wavelength, uh, uh, make the light dimmer more or less, so she does not notice anymore that we're looking. And at some point, indeed, uh, the girls again appear on the other side with their panties swinging over the head. But at that point, the gate wavelength is so long, you can no longer discern any details, so uh, it doesn't help you in any way. Uh, I thought it was an interesting metaphor which uh, breaks at the end at some point but um, yeah so uh, QMC says basically that all these pretty girls are naked except when you look at them when you make an observation then snap into this probability of one of a fully dressed one now uh, the idea to circumvent this whole role of the observer disturbing the experiment, the light shining on uh, this uh, electron in uh, the previous uh, case. Uh, Einstein, Pudelsky and Rosen came up with an experiment to, um, to make, basically make a measurement without disturbing it. So they say we take two entangled particles, so uh, a photon with a positive spin and negative spin, and these spins are entangled and we take them apart and then we can make a measurement on one without the other one disturbing the other one and uh, the thing what happens if you do that so the, the girl thing would be that you take identical twins and you, you let them walk apart and they go through two different rooms and you observe them in one room and then you think the other one can never know that we're looking at her sister in room one and uh, she's in room two how could she possibly know but the experiment uh, experimental outcome of this is that if you look at girl one then um, the other one knows instantaneously and this was very troubling to Einstein because yeah it would require communication at an infinite infinite speed and his theory only uh, says that you could have the maximum speed is speed of light um, so the, the other possibility is that there are hidden variables so uh, the reason why the, the same thing happens to both of them is because they have something pre-programmed inside of them and that was later uh, debunked by uh, an experiment of John Bell, an uh, Irish physicist and he proved that you could not uh, use quantum mechanics and say something of hidden variables you were you, you did not know but they really existed inside uh, these particles uh, you could not modify quantum mechanics in that way um, this was as far as it, as it, as it went basically things, the, the behavior of the particles was truly random to the last moment when you make a measurement and then the other one com uh, complies and correlates with the first uh, particle so that that was in a diff difficult thing either quantum mechanics uh, is is wrong although it gives a lot of good descriptions with comply with reality or 
or things are really deterministic at the um, indeterministic at the mic microscopic level, or things can communicate at a diff distance greater than uh, at a distance uh, with a speed greater than than uh, light.